الرحمن الرحیم مانرز ادب Anything that we are about to think about, to say something about, if it is not coming from Allah and His Prophet والسلام, and the Awliya Allah, it is Malayani. It is complete imagination, illusion and delusion. We are taking our knowledge from those ones who are Ahlul Haq, the people of truth. Holy Prophet والسلام, said, Allah has sent me to what? To perfect the good character, to perfect the good manners. Islam came to perfect the good manners of mankind. With the manners the shepherd or the road sweeper will know how to be in the presence of a king. With the manners, the humble person can be in the divine presence. The manners prepares us for divine presence, for our return back to Allah. Don't think our ilm is going to prepare us. How we can show our ilm to Allah? Don't think our amal, our ibadat, is going to mean anything. What, our amal and our ibadat that is so corrupted and mixed up and dirty? It is something to be said and something to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be presented to Him. But manners, now that time, With the manners, Allah will allow us to be in His Divine Presence. So what is His manners? What is His manners? Everyone is speaking about it. The manners that we should look and we should follow must be coming from the Holy Prophet And He has shown us manners that He doesn't leave any room there for emptiness or for expansion or for improvement. He has shown us manners, the most perfect manners for eating. He has shown us the most perfect manners for praying. He has shown us the most perfect manners for being with each other, for being with those who are in authority. He has shown us perfect manners how to be with our Lord that time when you're following the complete manners of the Holy Prophet والسلام, you will understand and you will walk his way where is bad manners coming from if good manners is coming from Allah and his Prophet والسلام, where is bad manners coming from bad manners is coming from shaitan that shaitan, before he became shaitan, he was azazil. He had so much ilm, knowledge, that he was teaching the angels. Why was he able then to be in the presence of the angels? Because he is not an angel. He is made from fire. The angels are made from light. He is made from fire. Meaning his creation is lower than the angels. How was he able to reach high? Because of his ibadat. Yes, he was doing his mat too. He was worshipping so much that he was able to rise into the paradises and enter. And he was teaching some of the angels. Not the highest angels, some of the other angels. And this shaitan he lost his manners. 
Because once he started rising, he forgot himself. He thinks he can rise forever. He's thinking, I'm worshipping, so I'm rising. I'm learning, so I'm rising. He is not understanding. What is our ilm? What is our worship? Compared to the mercy of Allah. Compared to the blessings of Allah. If we are concentrating on that, oh, then we are like shaitan who thinks we can go anywhere if only we do more. That time you are putting Allah aside. Because you think now, like what shaitan is thinking, if I can rise from this world, and if I can enter into the paradises, and I can reach to the angels, then that maqam al-mahmud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, I can also reach, why not? I just have to do more. Because I'm looking, the angels, they're not going up or down. Exceptions, we're not going to talk about that, that Allah allows to teach us. But angels, they don't even question. But me, shaitan is saying, if I just work hard, I can get it. In reality, he's pushing Allah aside now. When he saw the Maqam al-Mahmud, he's understanding now that the Maqam al-Mahmud, he cannot fit to the angels. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, the physical form of Adam alayhi salam, and he's looking at it, and he enter through the mouth, circling around everywhere and out, we discover that the body is empty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put his secret in there. You think shaitan doesn't know that Allah is going to fill it up? He knows. But he is denying it. And telling to the angels it is empty. It is made from dirty mud, clay. Lower, I'm made from a fire. But he's never thinking, what about the angels? The angels are made higher than me. Why they are not thinking and aiming? Why are they in submission? Don't think that when Adam alayhi salam, when the one breath, the holy divine breath was given to him and he became alive and he sneezed. And later he said, Alhamdulillah first words, praising Allah, that so many Muslims have forgotten this sunnah. Not only are sneezing, but waking up from the death, the small death, sleeping, just to say Alhamdulillah, that Allah has given me life again. Because when you sneeze, uh, scientists have discovered you sneeze, you, your heart stops for a split second. And the life stops there and it starts again which is why we say alhamdulillah and adam alayhi salam without knowing anything without learning anything understand adam alayhi salam he did not learn he says alhamdulillah he was able to praise his lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then later allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking him what do you say? What is that name? What is that name? What is that name? Name is not a name. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gave him the secrets. And he's able to know. And shaitan got very jealous because of that. Saying, how can this new creature that is made from this clay and mud know so much? He has never done any single thing to prove his faith to his Lord, while well, I have done hundreds and thousands of years of service to Allah, and Allah is favoring him, and he knew that there was a secret there, and he knew this one, Adam alayhi salam, 
and the light of the Prophet Adam is the Holy Prophet That one was for the Maqam al-Mahmud. And he said, I lost again. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an order to all the angels to make a sujood to Adam alayhi salam, uh, shaitan says, no. I made from a fire. You made a mistake. He is saying, if anyone should bow down, they should bow down to me. But he's hiding. And he's saying, I bow down only to you, Ya Rabbi. But he's not being sincere with that too. Because if you make a submission to Allah, you have to submit to his order and his words too. And if he says, bow down to a rock, to a stone, you have to bow down to a stone. So many people are going to misunderstand this, of course. They say, where is the proof? Don't we bow down to the Kaaba? Isn't that a stone? Oh, but that's just a direction. Ah. Oh, so you understand. Because shaitan did not understand. He's just looking at the outside form. And he got jealous with what is inside. And he says, I'm not going to bow down to this worse than a stone. This is a clay. I bow down only to Allah. So he misunderstood. Did he misunderstand? No, he wants to understand wrongly. Because he is not understanding the intention. So what is this? Manners is losing yourself, not knowing your limits. Manners is not knowing yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, you think whoever that is in front of you is just like yourself or lower than yourself. A person who doesn't have manners is just going to treat the person who is in front of him just like himself or someone who is lower than him. But the person who has manners, who understands himself, and understands his Lord, that time he understands all of Allah's creation. You understand? He understands the animals, he understands the fish, he understands the birds, he understands the man, he understands the angels, he understands. He understands because he understands his Lord and he knows how to behave. Because he knows how to behave in the court of his Lord, you think he doesn't know how to behave to people, to animals, to the other ones. And he's going to treat it according to their station now. He's not going to go up, he's not going to go down according to their station. Because he understands himself and he understands his Lord. So the whole key now is understanding yourself. It is not to understand your ruh, your spirit. It is to understand your ego. It is to understand the veils that is separating you and Allah. And if you are busy just removing that, you're coming closer. How are we going to learn this? Manners you cannot learn from the books. So many people are reading Quran and Kirim 24 hours, but they have the worst manners. Some people reading the Quran and Kirim with the bad manners. They are lying down in the masjid with their feet pointing to the Qibla and reading the Quran. You think that time, whatever blessings is going to come to you is going to be good, the blessings will turn to something very bad. Or they're sitting and they're putting the Quran and Kirim on the floor or on their lap. So there is no manners. Because you don't understand now your relationship to that book. If a man who understands, who has manners, he understands what is that book of Allah, what is the Quran Kirim, that is a word of Allah, that time he's going to treat it with proper respect. This is not with ilm. There's nothing to do with ilm, with knowledge. Book knowledge, zahir knowledge. It has to do with your own understanding of yourself. Man, simple man, who says, I, I know I don't know anything. 
and he's seeing the Quran he carrying on the floor and he says this is the book of Allah how can anyone do this he's going to pick it up and close kiss it and put it away but now so many Muslims with so much knowledge you enter into masjids you see it everywhere it's printed like a newspaper and it's treated like that we are upset because non-Muslims are disrespecting the Quran why are we upset are we respecting it? You learn manners from the people who have manners. You cannot learn manners from a book. Find those ones who have manners. Find those ones who are between hope and fear of their Lord. Find those ones. And then that time you're going to understand how to be uh, filled with manners in every situation. It will come to you. It will make you to wake up. You will understand. Let me know Allah Fatiha.